This year, we've skied about 10 days so far around Utah and even into the state of Colorado. This past week, Utah has seen some snowfall to help make up for the dry start to the season. In this episode, it's safe to say we scored our first true pow day of the year at Brighton Resort. Good morning, squad. Welcome back to another episode of season two here. I think this is episode 73 now as we're winding down to get ready for the launch of season three, which is pretty crazy, but I'm just going to get right into it. I've kind of missed a lot of the sort of morning stuff here getting to where we are, but I'm currently at Brighton Resort. I've never ever been to Brighton before, so I'm excited to explore a new resort. We've gotten basically pretty consistent snow over the week so the conditions should be pretty good it's kind of like a double-edged sword because although we have been getting some good snow this week there's still not a ton open at snowbird here at brighton at solitude so it's kind of like even though we have snow there's still um, only select parts of the mountain open but i did look at the the conditions here for brighton and it does look like they have some of their upper stuff open a little bit so should be a good good day of ripping here um, to get back into it for the week. I'm gonna try to get up a little earlier today, enjoy the conditions um, before they get skied up too much, but that's really it. We're jumping right into it. Um, let's get up on the mountain. that bright and again I've never been here before but we do have some pretty flat light today it's a good thing we got the uh, the low light lenses on flat lights good it means we got snow in the forecast so looks like there's about three or four lifts open and I'm gonna try to go to one of my friends Tyler recommended something called snake bowl he said there's a little hike so I'm gonna try to work my way over there see if we can catch some more of this fresh snow No idea where I'm going, but I guess that's the fun of it. I mean, that looks good, but there's no tracks. I don't know if it's cliffed out or what. It's like there's some people over here. I 
think it's good in there. winter out here i think this is our first like official nice pow day the snow is just so good it's what you'd expect with the utah just dry fluffy snow so i keep hitting the same same face same lap off of a, a lift called snake creek i was gonna do the hike what's that i like to make youtube videos i'm lucas catania oh thanks man you having a good day yeah, right? Yeah. Have fun, man. But yeah, this is too good to even keep talking to you guys. I just want to give you an update that it's dope out here. Dumping snow, lots of people. And we're going to keep uh, keep ripping this until it gets skied up. I think I'm kind of hitting a little treasure here. Not a lot of people are coming out this way. Not a ton of vert, but it's still really good, so. that I've had so far in our nine days of skiing. This right here has been the best day. It's just like one of those days, it just keeps snowing, stuff keeps getting filled in, and the snow quality is just so good. Utah is known for amazing snow, but this is just like next level. It is so dry, it's so light, it's so fluffy, so easy to ski. It's just like one of those days where it's just cold, it's uh, the snow is great, and like look at like gators all frozen over. Uh, it's just, just been a remarkable day, and it almost looks like the sun might be coming out. It's almost like one o'clock. I've skied just nonstop on the same lift, same sort of area. And I think finally some of the people are going in. It was, the line was kind of long in the beginning. It's probably like a 10 minute wait, which still isn't that bad for only three lifts open. But now it's getting um, pretty, um, pretty short and there's still snowing. So it's just like, it's like one of those days where it's just like the snow is so light and beautiful and quiet. It's just like, it's a very beautiful, beautiful day. Oh, this is so sick, guys. Let's go. Let's go. This is what we needed. This is what we needed. This is just like a pure ski vlog. Like not even a lot of van stuff, just like 
just doing laps. Oh man, I'm pumped. Hit a uh, hit a branch. So guys, little trick while I'm doing this: if you're ever on steep terrain or like deep snow, you can stick your tail into the snow, into the mountain, kind of give you a little bit more support. So then, when they go to clip in, the ski's not like falling down the mountain or anything, and I can clip in a lot easier. So, little trick. If you ever find yourself in a precarious spot, now let's see if we can get a few more face shots here before the day goes. Oh, oh yeah. Right What's better than after a sick pow day like that? A nice hot bowl of soup. I ran the heater the whole time I was gone. So when I got in here, it was 60 degrees. So nice warm van, dry, making a bowl of soup for some lunch. Doesn't get any better than that. I'm also topping it off with a nice ham and cheese sandwich. So we really got this setup going on. I think my lens is fogging up because it was just so cold outside and now it's pretty warm in here, but Bring it on in closer, guys. That would, honestly was just such a sick day. And not only just for the pow, but it was really the first day so far. Let's see, it's our ninth day. It was the first day that I really felt like I was really just like up on my edges. I felt fast, but in control. I felt like agile. I just felt good on the skis. And it was really the first first day of the year that I you know really felt that I had my skis underneath me. The quality of the snow today was was one of the all-time best i think just the snow was just so good i think because it was so cold just really couldn't have asked for anything more so super stoked on how all that played out and that was literally all off the same run the snake creek lift because millie and the other one wasn't western or something they're not even open yet so it's still just one lift and we got all that fresh snow all day long so super stoked what a day hope you guys enjoyed definitely the best day of the year so far entire van from snow i haven't cleared it off really all week from the roof um, to the bumper the boxes just everything and i think that's something that might be overlooked if you're looking to get a van is just how much snow removal it takes getting the solar panel de-iced de-cleared all of that sort of stuff but it's kind of it's a super satisfying thing to do at least for me personally it's almost five o'clock already and i forgot that brighton had night skiing so it's like more people keep showing up which makes sense that's because they have night skiing which is pretty cool so maybe one day we'll come back here for some night skiing as well but for now i think i'm gonna start to head back down the canyon here get out of the uh the winter weather a little bit but uh just an all around sick day Guys, that is literally a whole line of cars behind me. 
and then look at all these cars in front of me. It's probably been about a half an hour and we're barely moved from Brighton and Solitude. There's just so many cars. I guess this is the reality of the Cottonwood Canyons at sort of like a peak rush hour. After literally about like two hours of getting out of Big Cottonwood Canyon, um, I have finally parked up at a Walmart here and I kind of wanted to show you guys a little bit when I'm parking in a place that's more stealthy or just like a parking lot like this, which is typically the case in the winter. You're never really like at a campsite or a designated campground. Just sort of some of the steps I do to be stealthy and make it so I don't cause any commotion. So really the first thing, once I pull into a spot, all my lights are turned off and my First priority is to block out all of my windows so I can turn the lights on and essentially just hang out and not make it so people can see in here. So first thing I gotta do <clears throat> is pull the stuff that I need in the living area and then basically get my blackout curtains and put them all up in the cab area. Okay, so once I have the front area shades in, um, I only turn on this little under cabin light because they can still see in here a little bit. Um, so the next priority is getting the blackout curtain across. And then after that, I'm pretty much all set. It's nearly impossible to see any lights on in here. The only thing I really need to do with this curtain is just make sure that it's sort of blocked out around my heater vent so I can still blow the heater. It is quite dark, but you can see I just used these clips and um, there's a hole cut and now the heater can still blow. But now, now we are totally blacked out, we're completely insulated, and now we're basically good to go for the night. And then the last thing I do is lock the van and just keep the key somewhere that's super accessible not somewhere where they're buried or hard to get to it's not really a big deal here at walmart but if you're ever out camping somewhere and you need to leave right away have the keys accessible and also make it so your cockpit area your driver area is basically all clear so you can just get in and go this little pad here controls my heater it's currently 45 degrees in the van so it's really not even that cold i'll just set it to something like I don't know, 65 is pretty good, it's comfortable, it's not like super warm. And then I can set a time, 420 minutes, let's just do like 600 minutes, that would be about 10 hours. The lights might flicker a little bit because it's starting to, to kick on. And now basically the heater is just going to run um, and cycle on and off, um, regulated by the thermostat here. So if it hits 65 degrees in here, the heater will kind of shut off, and then when it senses it's getting too low, it'll hit, turn back on. So basically I can just leave this on all night um, and it'll just make it 65 degrees in here. The last thing I do is basically charge everything, sort everything, clean everything because um, the van gets quite messy when I'm skiing and stuff like that. But now it's basically just making sure all my batteries are charged up and all that sort of stuff. I built this shelf here just for literally charging GoPros for this exact reason. So there is a little USB outlet that I can turn on there and then I just run two USBs up and you can see I have the GoPro batteries charging and then also the Max there so that stuff can just kind of stay up and out of the way there and then that way we are good to go for tomorrow with batteries. <laughs> does look like the low is going to be around seven five degrees even early in the morning so not the coldest we've ever had but definitely 
Uh, pretty chilly, so it'll be a good test here with the van. It was a great day today, so thank you guys for hanging out. I hope you guys enjoyed our first real POW day um, and our first time at Brighton. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see all you guys in the next episode. Take it easy, fam. Hey, hey. Peace out.